So in this video, I'm gonna answer a question that I think a lot of you are wondering, and that is, why do I live alone? Some of you might know that I've actually been in a relationship for the past decade, but we choose to live separately. And some of you might think that's strange or wonder why, and today I'm kinda of gonna give you a little bit of an insight into what my reasoning is. Have you guys ever seen a house or walked into a room in a house where you've just felt really comfortable. You're like, I love all the furniture in here. I love all the colors. I love the lighting, the whole mood that the room brings. Well, imagine if you could design your own room and your entire house exactly how you like with the, the lighting that you like, maybe the air conditioned comfort that you like, all of the furniture is exactly your style and you don't need to compromise for anybody else. Well, that's pretty much why my partner and I chose to live separately because I get to express myself in my own home how I like and he gets to do the same in his home. Not to mention that to be honest, both of our lifestyles are really different. Obviously, I work for myself, I choose my own working hours, I can stay up late at night or sleep in, in the morning, whereas he actually has a typical nine to five job, so he has to have a good night's sleep in order to be productive the next day. And I think that if we were living together in a small space, we'd sort of be disturbing each other or we'd have to compromise a lot in order to make each other happy or each other's lives work efficiently and by doing that we might be kind of sacrificing our own happiness in small ways which then add up and kind of cause conflict so it could be something as simple as who didn't wash the dishes or who left wet washing in the washing machine by living separately not only do you get to sort of express yourself however you like in your own home you also eliminate all the small things that you typically fight about so when you do come together you're coming together to enjoy each other's company and that's it so my partner phil does actually come over to visit for dinner many nights of the week and on his days off we spend a lot of time together so we do actually see each other all the time it's just when he's at work I'm in my own home and when we're both sleeping we're, we're typically in our own homes. If we have like you know a day off or whatever we might sleep over at each other's homes that sort of thing but most of the time we choose to live separately and it works really well for us. You need a wash. You need a bath. You're stinky, hey? Oi! Mwah. You're a good dog, hey? They need a bath. <laughs> We've had so much rain lately that there hasn't really been like a hot enough day where I can bath them and then they'll dry through the day to come back inside the caravan. And I find as well, like, if we don't have a hot day where they can actually dry well, they just stink like wet dog and they don't dry properly because they've got like an undercoat so I think one day soon might be your day to be bathed hey you want to have a bath he actually likes having baths so it's pretty normal for us to get heaps of rain during summer here because we are in like a subtropical climate and as you just saw we had a storm which is also something that we typically experience a lot of the time during summer especially after like a heap of humidity which is what we've had lately we haven't had like really really hot days but we've had a few days over the last few weeks where we've had quite a bit of humidity which isn't really that comfortable for any of us because it's like it's hard to explain it's not really hot but it's just like really sticky and you know if I have my hair down it like just sticks to me it's just yeah really uncomfortable but today's actually a nice day it's it's not too hot at all uh, we've had a heap of rain and everything's nice and green and lush as you can see. I've spent quite a bit of time lately mowing the lawn and this property because it was starting to really overgrow. There's still heaps left to do, like 
lots of whippersnippering and there's actually some grass across the other side here where the chicken coop is which is too long for the mower to get into. I tried to mow it with the mower we have yesterday and it was just too long for it so I think we're going to need someone to come in and like give it a good whippersnip and then I'll go over it with the mower and once we've done that then I'll be able to maintain it. As you may have watched in my last video I was talking about how now I'm doing mowing on the property and mowing is something that for some reason I really enjoy doing I don't know why but also I've never used a ride on before so this year is the first time I've ever used one of those which you know it's not that hard to do it's actually really fun I find but it's a good skill to have especially like living the life I have if I ever have to leave this property you know now I have the skill of knowing how to use a ride on that I could actually you know offer that to another property owner if I have to move from this property so yeah 2022 is a year where I want to learn a heap of new skills so riding using the ride on mower is one of those things Luna's walking straight under the camera I don't know why they choose to like go right near the camera in the creek <laughs> it's obviously my fault because why am I putting my camera in the creek hey he's a good boy yeah so this year he's learning new skills so there's a couple of things that I want to learn as well which is mechanics my car is getting a little bit older and until I can afford to buy a new one I'm probably gonna have to do a bit of maintenance myself or at least you know build my knowledge on mechanics with my car so that I don't kind of get ripped off by other mechanics and I have a better understanding of what might be going wrong when something does go wrong so that's another thing I want to work on I'm also going to be building something for edge which I might leave as like a little surprise for you guys but in the next coming videos there'll be some footage of something that I'm building for edge so that we can go on adventures and yeah so that in so while I'm building that, I'll be learning like carpentry skills, woodwork skills. Hang on a minute. Luna, can you come back, please? She's, <laughs> she's gone into the deep, deep grass. So if you guys don't know much about Australia, we have a lot of venomous snakes here. And there's snakes literally on this property that could kill us very quickly. And they tend to live like in long grass, so. That's why I've been trying to keep the lawn really low so that, you know, we can see snakes or we can kind of prevent them from moving around certain parts of the property and keep these guys safe because they don't obviously understand the risk, but I do. We've got a snake here called the Eastern Brown. I don't have any footage to show you of one, but they're basically like a big brown snake. And if they even bitten me, apparently I could die within 20 minutes. And apparently what it actually does is makes your blood coagulate I think so your blood just basically goes really thick and can't pump around your body and it's a really horrible way to die so yeah it's not not a very nice animal to be sharing this property with but there's not much I can do about that <laughs> So as you guys may have seen, I actually have my chickens now. I've had them for I think nearly two months. So I got them like, I think it was like mid-December sometime. And they've been living in that little hutch that you guys also saw me build a couple of episodes ago. And I had three to begin with and now I only have two. And that's because one of them died about maybe three weeks ago, which was so sad. Because even though like I haven't had them very long, I still feel like quite attached to them. So finding one that had passed away was um, really heartbreaking. And we don't really know why it died. We think maybe a baby python got into the coop and strangled it. Because it was pretty much just like dead in its nesting box. And the two other ones were outside in the outside area of the coop. Because they were traumatized and too terrified to go back inside. So yeah not really sure why that happened I think also sudden death syndrome in chickens is really common so it could have been that as well but yeah we'll never know but it was kind of a reality check and it made me kind of you know make some adjustments to the chicken coop to make it more snake proof because the way that it came it doesn't have anything like underneath the outside area to stop a snake from like kind of like sliding underneath the coop 
so I've now got like some wire which I've just like put there with some rocks to help keep it down but I think I need to find like a more permanent spot for the chicken coop on the property because at the moment I've kind of just kept moving it around because obviously I don't want it to kill the grass all over the property um, so I'm gonna find like a better spot for it they are free ranging now when I first got them I kept them in the coop for I think like two weeks while they were still really little and then slowly let them out like an hour before sunset and they went back in by themselves and now they're fine to pretty much be out all day and while they're out they're actually just um roaming free i'll i'll try and film some footage for you guys oh they're like doing something really weird right now let me film this for you they're just like on the ground i hope they're okay What are you guys doing? Sunning. <laughs> I've actually never seen them do that before. One of them was doing it to begin with and now they're both doing it. It's very cute. Unless one of them's not okay and it's... Let me just check. Hey chickens! Are you going to move if I come near you? Yeah, you're fine. Anyway, that's me, the uneducated chicken owner. <laughs> I was probably very normal but I've never seen them do that before so just checking. Oh, look at this. Edge is actually scared of them. He was just rolling. And they ran over to him and that was very cute. For some reason, like, as you've seen, Luna is obsessed with them. So she'll just sit all day watching them. Kind of making sure that they're safe. Um, I'll see if I can film Edge here because he's really scared of them. He's really scared of them when they come up to him, but he loves walking around eating their poo, which I suppose helps me out because the fact that they're free ranging. Oh, here's Luna. Yeah, the fact that they're free ranging means that they're pooing everywhere, but I've got my good little doggy helpers that just walk around and eat all the poo that they poo around the caravan. So I'm not likely to stand in any because they're eating it all, which I don't know whether that's going to be a good thing for the dogs, but we will see anyway so today i've actually woken up and i have a sniffly nose i don't know if you can hear that i'm a little bit congested and i keep sneezing and that sort of thing so i think i might have got the virus um yeah i'm not sure whether it is that but i'm just gonna isolate anyway so here in brisbane we've done really well with covid the whole time the pandemic has been happening we pretty much only locked down for like three days at a time a handful of times over the last two years but then we recently opened the borders in Queensland to like everyone else and I think some more like international travelers as well and now um, it's everywhere I think we're kind of we've already like peaked where I live and it's the numbers are like dropping but yeah COVID's everywhere a lot of people I know have had COVID and I've been lucky so far because I do live a pretty isolated life but maybe it's caught up on me because I don't think today what I'm experiencing is uh, hay fever I think that this might might be the virus but another thing is here um, to get a test apparently it's really hard and I'm not a big fan of like sticking that thing up my nose I would much prefer to isolate for like seven days or as long as i'm symptomatic than to stick that up my nose because i've had one before and it was horrible so yeah unless i can get a rat test which is like the rapid antigen test um i know that there's one that you can just spit into if i can get one of those and i'll take a test but i think i'll just isolate instead and assume that this is covid so my project for this afternoon is to reposition this chicken coop because i want to find like a more permanent spot for them where I don't have to keep moving this thing around. So yeah, that's what's on the Savo.
So where the chicken coops are actually placed is right outside my bedroom window of the caravan. So if something, you know, is harassing them at night, I'm very likely to hear it and then I can actually come out and, you know, save them if that's the case. But yeah, I think that I'm going to leave that here. As I said earlier, I wasn't feeling so well and I feel like it's kind of getting worse the more physical activity I'm doing. Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next episode. I'm gonna have obviously lots of time on my hands considering I'm sick. So if I don't feel too unwell, I'll be making like a few more videos for you this week. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next episode.